everything in this life has multiple meanings. I see the Lord high and lifted up. I see myself high and lifted up. The Lord of love is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord of love makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord of love, the Lord of my heart, restoreth my soul. The Lord of love causes my cup to run over. The Lord of love prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, even when my enemies are just my private thoughts to myself. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What happens when you're in the presence of enemies and nobody else is in the room with you, Dr. Flo? Huh? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? When the table that's been prepared in the presence of the enemies is with you in a room alone by yourself as I am right now physically, not digitally, not spiritually, and certainly not ancestrally. But what happens when you prepare that table in the presence of enemies and it's just you in the room, but then you realize that the Lord of love has anointed your head with oil. And that's what I've come to do today, to open your eyes and to anoint your head with oil. Well, who are you? I'm Dr. Flo, and I'm loved and lovable. And I've been called to stop everything else in my life, including my fancy jobs that y'all can check out on my LinkedIn, to pour oil on your heads. That surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell, Tara. Starlight, Love and Action Network, Real Loves Club and Beyond in the house of the Lord of love forever. It is your house. The house of the Lord of love is your house, your earth house, your soul house. And you can choose in this moment to dwell in that house forever. You can take your goodness and mercy. Oh, woo, sorry. You can take your goodness and, oh, look at all the goodness and the mercy. We're holding on to the goodness and the mercy. We ate the goodness and the mercy this morning. We're drinking the goodness and the mercy. Woo! You can take the goodness and mercy into your house, into the temple of your heart, and dwell there forever. I don't have any real tissue on set. So the dishcloth will do. You can dwell in the house of your love forever. You can dwell there. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't dwell there. It is inside of you. You are a soul cased in here. And I know it feels that way sometimes for you because it feels that way for me. I'm stuck inside myself. When that house has love inside, it begins to reverberate. That's another word I got to teach my music kids. Reverberation. The act of sound resonating and coming out and back. Creating that loving space inside of you. I cannot learn other people's lessons for them. They must get there themselves at their own time. I can simply hold loving space for them as they go through their journey. That's what I do professionally for 11 year olds for 20-somethings, for 30-somethings, for 40-somethings, for 50-somethings, and I even got a 60-something. We hold space for your journey here. And today, 
we open our physical eyes and our spiritual eyes to see the good around us. This week I've been talking very, very candidly about the issues of my life. The decades of depression. The, the decades of disempowering anxiety. And there comes a time that when you're really recognizing within yourself that you're loved and lovable, you begin to confront these things. You begin to open your physical eyes and your spiritual eyes. That maybe the depression is coming from being hyper fixated on a past that you cannot change. And maybe all of your anxieties are anchored in a future that's so unpredictable that it scares you. So instead of coming into neutral positioning, getting still and looking around us to see the support, the anchoring presences, 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 the presences of anchoring. I don't know. But having enough wisdom to get still to just notice the good. I haven't done a Third Eye Friday in a minute. Maybe I did it last week. I don't know. Um, but it's important that I remind uh, the community, as I did last year in the winter time, uh, that. You need to be looking for the good in your life. So much of my deep depression, even into suicidal ideation and beyond, was anchored in the fact that I could not see or find anything to be grateful for in my present. And this is why I annoy people, and this is why a lot of people don't sit at my lunch table in the high school of life, even at present. Uh, because I'm going to ask you, after you complain to me for days, weeks, months, years about how awful your coexistence with Source is here, uh, I'm going to ask you, what do you have in your hands right now to be grateful for? And for those of you watching live or in replays, well, I just gave you the hint. These magical devices here. They allow you to reach out and ask for help. They allow you to work through annoying work weeks. They allow you to learn new skills. They allow you to connect with coaches who want you to be your best version of yourself. Poppy Water has compiled, uh, he's compiled a brilliant program here. We affectionately call it the seven day pillar challenge. Seven days to the week, each day has a pillar anchored around ancient chakras, Vedic energetic centers of the body that when you focus upon them, you begin to have better days. Uh, this stuff predates the Bible. If you can believe that. And we lean on all kinds of interfaith text here to light our path. The chakra that we talk about every Friday here in network is the third eye. This is the point of the body located around the forehead between the eyes even where us spiritual types believe that we gather our insight and intuitive wellness. This is the part of you that had a hunch that something bad was going to happen. 
before it happened. This is the part of you that says, I need to leave this person and their energies alone. And then you do it and your life becomes better. This is the part of you that anchors your forgiveness. Remember, you got to see a forgiving thought in order to forgive. Some people will suffer and will die in their suffering because they never saw in the vision of their mind the ability to forgive what happened to them in the past. Gotta say it. You gotta forgive your past to move forward. And I don't do a lot of goddess here because y'all can do whatever you want to do. I'm not in the control of you and you're not in control of me. But I'm going to go out on a limb today and just share with the community that's listening and has ears to hear that maybe the reason why you and I are stuck where we are is because we have not forgiven a past that we cannot change. So we start to use tools and even if they seem silly to your family and friends and your watchers and love lurkers, you start putting on the color blue and you start using the colors of indigo to bring calm to you. You start praying prayers of greater communication. You start asking the universe, higher power, God, whatever you call it, for more confidence. Tara and I, in our co-worked ministry efforts, we discovered weeks ago, if not months ago, that the only way to even do the work that we want to do on this planet going forward, we're going to have to increase the confidence of the people. And I include myself in the people. Maybe now going forward when I say the people, I'll do this so y'all can let me know that I in no way think I'm better than you and I in no way think that I'm less than you. But until we increase the confidence of our hearts and the confidence of the people, it's going to be Groundhog's Day because you got to have to, you got to have confidence to make a change. You got to have confidence to know what you know and you have to have confidence to be comfortable. You have to be confident to sit your black ass down, Dr. Flo. You got to be confident to pick one path and walk it comfortably with ease, which we'll get to in a few minutes. You gotta have confidence to get comfortable. Some of y'all will. I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak. I'm, I'm cancel, cancel, cancel. I pray that you don't die miserable. I pray that you don't die uncomfortable. I pray that we all find the confidence to be in the comfort of our lives. That's why we like celebrities in the United States so much. That's why we're obsessed with the Kardashians and other mediocre people. Because they have the confidence to be comfortable with money. The rest of us are not comfortable with the money. With the abundance. That's why every day I try to share with you this new definition that I got from Bashar about what abundance really is. Abundance, as defined by the channel Bashar, if you can be weird and wonky with us, abundance is defined by Bashar as having everything you need when you need it. And what a wonderful feeling for those of us with these smartphones on TikTok and beyond that we have everything that we need 
as we need it. And relaxing into that feeling and being confident about it changes the way you relate to your day. I don't let people with a smartphone pout around me. You cannot pout or moo, as we say. You need to get like, uh, we need to get cow print t-shirts made that say recovery moor for our community with a love and action logo on the back. I'm in recovery. I'm a recovery moor. I don't, I don't let people, it needs to be like, like a giant white shirt with cow prints all over it. And on the front, like recovering moor. Love and action network on the back because we're setting people free from this bullshit. I don't let people moo around me because if you are complaining and you have a smartphone, you could have watched Tara or Snacks or Poppy Water or me try to encourage you 24-7 in our magazine and podcasts. Spotify is free. Stop mooing and try for once in your life to take in the goodness and mercy that's following you. I got to move on, folks. Production has brought these down to under 30 minutes. I cannot preach all day here. Y'all don't want to hear it. I don't want to turn into wah, 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 wah. But if you got one of these, you are extremely powerful to have a supercomputer in your pocket or your purse. Tap into your kumba. Kwanzaa word for creativity. Tap into your kumba. Start moving like a zumba. If Poppy Water was here, he would be able to make like a whole like freestyle off of it. It would be a whole show, but that's his anointing. Kumba is creativity. You're creative enough to eat blackberries and plums and grapes and pray prayers about what you see. I see increase. I see love. We can do it in brown. I see ideas. I see money sitting on the table. I see people who want to not suffer as much today as they did yesterday. I see hope on the horizon. I see loved and lovable people because I see myself. No more confusion. No more misaligning with our intuition. No more being narrow-minded. Oh, I was here last week because I talked about what it means to be narrow-minded. I in no way think that I know everything. I know a very... If this were, if this were a pie graph, I know a very small sliver of the knowable knowledge in the universe. And I don't know what I don't know. So it wouldn't serve me to be narrow-minded and think I know everything. I, I could take an inquiry stance. Those of you who know me well know I never, you know, never. Ugh. I rarely these days, or I'm leaning out of these days, moving on statements first as it relates to the things that happen in my life and the goings on as it pertains to me these days, when not here, I'm talking to people like I'm being charged, like I'm charging them by the word. Some of the people uh, who are VIP in the network have seen that my, my text messages have gotten shorter. I'm, I'm now treating my text messages and those exchanges like I'm, like it's bought, like pay by the word. So I'm trying to focus my energies and reallocate things. But when I do have to speak, and trust me, folks, they do make me speak here. I try to take an inquiry stance, meaning that I ask a question. What do you mean? How can I serve you? Is everything okay? How can I support you more? If anything comes up today in the network, let me know. 
because narrow-minded would mean would mean that I would ha I would know everyone's feelings and assertions, and none of us are mind readers, right? The most narrow-minded people in society, and they have groups. They think they know me without meeting me. And how could you know me when I don't even fully know myself? So no more narrow-mindedness. No more shallow understandings or understandings. We're stepping into something new. Especially those of us who are choosing to um, increase our minds. We're tapping into great discernment. We're tapping into clarity. We're tapping into intuition. Our imaginations have never been brighter. Poppy Water and I are always talking about skits and things that we want to do. <laughs> and we're very much so connected to each other even when we power down our phones because we see with our mind's eye that we're all interdependent. I am because we are. I see that I am because we are. I see that I am because we are. I see that I am because we are. Ooh, so good. And that is the antidote for the loneliness, depression, and despair. They will not sit next to me necessarily in the lunch table of life in high school but being in your discernment being clear trusting your intuition honoring your imagination which also includes your capacity to make money and have multiple streams of income bags on bags on bags and being connected into the interdependence of us all recognizing that i see that i am because we are that right there is A recipe to set you free from the stinking thinking that causes all kinds of despair and a lot of bad days for people. Someone's having a bad day today because they feel disconnected from other humans. In the most connected time on earth. You've got work to do. The light workers, I ain't talking to everybody. The light workers, we got work to do. And then the text comes in and calms me down. What text am I talking about? 52 Weeks of Conscious Contact by Melody Beatty. Everybody who comes to these sessions daily, and we are a daily program, Love and Action Network, you're going through an Emotions Anonymous program because I notice in society something that's true within myself. A lot of us are doing a lot of this all day. Am I lying or am I dying? <laughs> and that emotional disturbance plagues a lot of people some of them to death so love and action network runs daily programs to lift those emotional burdens off of people so they can have happy healthy lives that are free from suffering and that is possible for you and it's possible for me and more often than not these days i tap into that i'm very happy i'm very healthy strong pulse and I'm not suffering in community with you all right now in any way so this Alcoholics Anonymous Codependents Anonymous Emotions Anonymous text takes us through 52 weeks of making conscious contact with the divinity inside of yourself once again people who are disintegrated or in pieces 
cannot allow the fullness of life and love in. So we're trying to just bring you back into harmony with your inside. That part of you that knows deeply and profoundly that you've always been loved and lovable by someone, including yourself, that you're loved and lovable right now, hopefully by yourself and by those around you. And that's always gonna be true. There's a wellspring of love within you. There's a love revival trying to get out of all of us. And we're the only ones standing in its way. Shake your ass today. Shake things up. You did not manifest here as an oak tree. You came as a human with all of this infinite possibility and potential. Go for it. Go for it. This week's theme, week 18, is easy does it. And somehow this text always comes along, you know, it always lands uh, right where I need it to. And today is day five of the day six of the week. I've been live for a very long time today spreading love, so they're just making sure that I'm still human and I'm here. And I do believe that I'm human and I do believe that I'm here. Day six. I watched a friend set up beach chairs and an umbrella. He was grunting, groaning, trying with all of his might to accomplish this simple task. After he finished, he looked around and clapped the sand off his hands. I'm pretty dumb, he said. It didn't have to be that hard or that much work. Yes, life really can be easier. Relaxing and letting it unfold can seem too simple and easy at times. What if we really knew that it was okay to gently go about our lives, living and working and handling things at a relaxed pace? What if we knew it was only to gently, I'm sorry, what if we knew it was okay to gently take care of ourselves and that a force would be present to guide us and help us accomplish each task, each problem, in fact, all the parts of our lives. Wow. I'm gonna read that part one more time. Yes, life really can be easier. Relaxing and letting it unfold can seem too simple and easy at times. What if we really knew that it was okay to gently go about our lives, living and working and handling things at a relaxed pace? What if we knew it was okay to gently take care of ourselves and that a force would be present to guide us and help us accomplish each task, each problem, in fact, all the parts of our lives? What if? Life experience truly has taught me that when I relax, I'm so much more capable of experiencing great happiness as well as simple joys. Things get done, problems get solved, and my needs get met. The gratitude focus of the day is we can be grateful for all the situations that teach and remind us that easy does it works. We can be grateful for all the situations that teach and remind us that easy does it works. I pray that everybody has an easeful day. I pray that everyone goes over to lovedandlovable.org to learn more about our events and our team and what we're cooking up for love. And that you will always remember that happiness, healthiness, and freedom from suffering is a thing that can be available to you now and forevermore. I'm Dr. Flo, and I, like you, am loved and lovable. See you tomorrow.